Live from our seven Tasmania studios. Your nightly news with Louise Hubar begins now. Good evening. First tonight, a popular stretch of Howrah Beach will remain closed this summer after water testing revealed high contamination levels. Members of the community met with Clarence City Council today to voice their concerns as investigations into the cause continue. Summer is just around the corner, but Eastern Shore locals won't be cooling off at Howrah Beach after council discovered the water is too contaminated for swimming. Well, that part of the beach will be out of action for this summer and it's been signposted accordingly, so people know that that part of Howrah Beach is not suitable for swimming. Locals seeking answers today at a public meeting. Is it just limited to there or is it further along Howrah Beach and does it include Bell Reed Beach? A section of the beach between two stormwater catchments ranked as poor quality following half a decade of monitoring the area. The Derwent Estuary program now working with Clarence Council and Taswater to identify the cause. When it rains it pick up pollution off our streets and then wash them into our waterways and in systems and they do end up in our, at our beaches. If a blockage occurs in a sewer pipe you have an overflow at some point in the system and depending on the location that can make its way into stormwater and make its way to the beach. This isn't the first time a popular swimming spot along the Derwent has been affected by poor water quality. Areas like Blackman's Bay South and Nut Grove Beach have also been plagued with contamination issues in recent years. Testing at Howrah will take place from December through March. In the meantime, southern Tasmanians can take a dip at 21 other beaches across the Derwent this summer. Ainsley Kosh, 7 Tasmania News. Hospitals across the state are preparing to reopen to the rest of the country next month with two secure facilities open to stock $1.2 million worth of medications specifically to treat patients with COVID-19. The backup stock is enough to treat an extra 280 people in need and keep ICU bays running for at least an extra two months. Medical experts have revealed a lesser known disease is on the rise, becoming the seventh most common cancer diagnosis in Australia. A Tasmanian mother and daughter pushing for more awareness of neuroendocrine tumours with symptoms often misdiagnosed. After little relief living with an irritable bowel syndrome misdiagnosis, Jules finally received the right answer in 2016. I was pretty happy that I had a diagnosis that somebody might be able to give me treatment because I'd had years of diarrhoea and abdominal pain and, and um, tiredness. Now receiving regular treatment in Melbourne for neuroendocrine cancer, a group of tumours also known as NETs. Often diagnosed at stage four, for many it can be too late. The condition, once thought of as rare, quickly becoming more common over the past five years. The difficulty is it's not that rare. It's now the seventh most diagnosed cancer um, in Australia. For that not to be a cancer that everyone knows about is astonishing. It's truly an increase and this has been seen around the world even in, in um economies where there's uh, very advanced uh, technologies but also in the developing world they're becoming much more more common we think there's probably environmental factors awareness said to be needed on the often misdiagnosed cancer with similar symptoms to many other health conditions part of the uh, neuroendocrine cancer australia's action plan is to improve uh, education at, at multiple levels to the general practitioners who see these patients, back to, to patients that, that they're aware of the condition. I see people who I haven't seen for ages and they usually say, my word, you look well, not knowing that I'm quite unwell. Recent awareness efforts, including these teenagers in Smithton, walking five kilometres every day for the past month to raise funds for a local grandmother and others like Jules. I think we're really lucky in that she is so feisty um, because she's certainly done very well to still be with us five years after diagnosis. Ruby Kamein, 7 Tasmania News. Tasmania's first LGBT plus theatre company is wrapping up its inaugural season with a gripping play full of self-interpretation. After a bumpy year amid COVID-19, the theatre closet is bringing queer content to Tasmanian audiences. 
standing centre stage, rehearsing for critically acclaimed production, Crave. Very impactful, it's dangerous, it's brutal, um, but Sarah Kane's works are always really fragile and layered with lots of really poetic meaning. Um, so yeah, it's a bit of a, it's a, bit of a smack in the face, um, but it's, it's a beautiful smack in the face. Premiering in Hobart last night, featuring just four characters. Four lonely, desperate people in their own spaces searching for something and searching for light and searching for love and going about it in a way that hopefully the audience can connect with. The text actually doesn't involve any stage directions or clear narratives um, and there are no real like beats or anything like that so we can do anything we like. The play drawing the curtain on the theatre closet's first year of production, formed by Andy to bring more queer content to Tasmanian stages. It highlights uh, shows that are written and performed by queer actors and writers. Um, we also like to see shows that are always seen as heteronormative through a queer lens. I enjoy that it's an all-inclusive safe space to create with people who are in a yeah, similar community to me. And Launching early last year, but experiencing delays and interruptions due to COVID-19. It felt a bit like, when am I going to get this up and running again, if ever? Um, is the world ever going to get back to seeing live theatre again? And yeah, I'm yeah very thankful that it's turned around. Crave runs at the Moona Arts Centre until next Saturday. Ruby Kamein, 7 Tasmania News. Fishing nets, foil and old fabrics made their catwalk debut today, showing sustainability is in fashion. Remade is the creation of Interweave Arts, a community group hoping to inspire with recycling. Sunny Skylight's been working on this cosmic jacket all year. So I have solar system on the back and then the astrology on the front with the signs and the constellation and the universe on the arms. She's about to take to the catwalk in it at Remade, a wearable art and recycled clothing show, all costumes composed of fabric or packaging that was headed for landfill. I love coming and it's so much fun, you know, and you get to meet all different types of people and you get to show off your skills, I suppose, as well. More than 100 participants showing off their upcycled artistic creations. I, I just love all the fantastic events down here and so many of them are in midwinter and I just don't want to be trapped in a boring old puffer jacket. I've entered Remade for eight years in a row now. It's a great way to let out your creativity. Some showing their heritage, including this Day of the Dead tribute. Sharing my culture but again also teaching to our children to really recycle and to use. The event is run by Interweave Arts, a group looking to foster a sustainable creative community here in Launceston. This empowers people, this uh, sends a great message about environment and using creative sort of forces to tell that story. You know, we're all dressing up, we're here to have fun and to show people, you know, what you can do with recycled goods. Josh Duggan, 7 Tasmania News. And McDonald's restaurants across Tasmania also joined in on the fundraising efforts. Kingston, one of 16 stores raising money for Hobart's Ronald McDonald House. Uh, we supply a home away from home for them and also we have families that have to go to Melbourne to the Royal Children's Hospital for treatment and they can stay in any of the houses there so it directly benefits all those families. This year McDonald's is hoping to raise $5.6 million for McCappy Day. Meanwhile, Tasmania has taken valuable first innings points in its shield clash with South Australia. Resuming the day with scores tied, Jordan Silk brought up his half century before lunch. As you can tell by the applause, that's 50 up to Jordan Silk. The Tigers eventually bowled out with a 62-run lead. South Australia reaching 32 in their second innings before rain interrupted and the match was called a draw. Good evening everyone. Launceston reaching 17 degrees today, 16 in Devonport, Burnie 15 and Hobart a top of 12. Across the state, Low Head saw the state's top of 18 degrees, 17 on Flinders Island, King Island, St Helens and Grove all 14 and 7 in Liawini. Cloud can be seen covering the entire state today with cold speckled cloud to the west and south. 
Across Australia, extensive cloud coverage can be seen over the southeast of the country, while a cloud band with embedded thunderstorms extends from the Northern Territory to New Zealand. Tomorrow, a cold front can be seen crossing Tasmania in the vigorous west to southwesterly flow with a trough in its wake. Northwesterly winds tomorrow 20 to 30 knots, reaching up to 35 knots in the north. And there is a gale warning in place from Sandy Cape to St Helens Point for northwest to southwesterly winds and a strong wind warning for all remaining coastal waters. A road weather alert is current for snow over roads in parts of the western, central plateau, upper Derwent Valley and southeast forecast districts. A bushwalkers alert for the western and central plateau districts and a warning to sheep graziers for all grazing districts. Showers in the south tomorrow with Hobart reaching 14, Richmond 15, 12 degrees in Ouse. In the north, 13 expected in Launceston and Devonport, 12 in Deloraine or with showers. 11 degrees in Burnie tomorrow, showers and 12 in Strawn and Curry. St Helens and Swansea both 15 degrees with showers and 14 in Whitemark. And the UV tomorrow is high across the state with sunset expected at around 10 past 8 p.m. On Monday, mainly fine about the central north and northeast. Showers elsewhere, though, with snowfall to 200 to 400 metres. Showers about the west, far south, and central areas on Tuesday, fine elsewhere. And on Wednesday, showers about the west and far south, clearing in the evening. 31 in Perth tomorrow, showers in Adelaide, Melbourne, and Canberra, and sunny and 28 in Brisbane. And currently, Hobart 10 and mostly cloudy, raining and 12 in Launceston, mostly cloudy and 14 in Devonport. And Lou, welcome back. That's all in weather tonight. And that's all your news for this Saturday evening. Thanks so much for joining us. We'll see you again tomorrow. Good night.